Hey everybody. Today we're going to take an existing code base, write a Chef Habitat package from scratch, and using the Chef Habitat Studio, make sure that the package can be built and is ready to be committed upstream and be consumed by shuttle ops in a build pipeline. In order for us to start packaging our application with Chef Habitat, the first thing that we need to do is to create a directory in the root of our code base called Habitat. This directory contains the most important aspect of a Habitat package, which is the plant file. The plant file is a batch script if this is going to be a Linux Habitat package or a Windows PowerShell script if this is going to be a Windows Habitat package. Because this is going to be a Linux Habitat package, it is going to be called plan.sh. If it was a Windows um, Habitat package, it will be called a plan.ps1. But this plan file, as I said, is a batch script, but it is not a free form batch script. It's not meant for us to start um, coding away and doing whatever we want in order to build this uh, Go binary and copy it somewhere. This is actually using a set of documented uh, habitat variables and habitat functions that most of which are optional and will fall back to something if you don't specify them. But this contains the core metadata that defines our Chef Habitat package. The bare minimum, the, the two variables that we actually need in order for this to be a plan file at all is a variable called package underscore name and a variable called package underscore version. This, not surprisingly, defines the name and the version of the Habitat package. I'm going to name the the package golang-habitat-hello-world, and I'm going to version it 0 0.1.0. This is all we need to create our Habitat package. There are also build phase callbacks, which are functions that define how the Golang binary is actually going to be built and how it's going to be copied to um, the final artifact. But we are not specifying them because those are technically optional. If we don't specify them, the Chef Habitat um, package building process is going to default to invoking a make file, which doesn't exist. So this will count as a plant file. It will start being built by Chef Habitat, but it will not succeed because there is no make file. And we have not specified other um, build phase callbacks that will override the default uh, behavior of invoking a make file. But this, in theory, is all you need to create a plant file. You need to install the Chef Habitat CLI. So if you go to habitat.sh and read documentation, there are instructions on how to do that for different platforms. On, when, uh, on Mac, I've used Brute to install it. So I have the Hab binary available. And I can use that to enter the Chef Habitat Studio. Before I do that, I'm going to export hab underscore auth underscore token and paste the token that I got from build, um, builder bldr dot habitat dot sh. And this token is linked to my profile on the Chef Habitat Builder. And it is what allows me to authenticate with it. And once we start using shuttle ops, we're going to be using the same token to actually connect, uh, to create a connection between shuttle ops and the Chef Habitat Builder, which will allow us to have this package built and uploaded for us to the Chef Habitat Builder, which will act as an artifact store for our package. But for now, all we're going to do is export this token and do hab studio enter. And this will enter the studio. This is an isolated environment. Um, it has uh, busy box binaries, so ls, cat, etc. And this is a very minimal environment for us to be able to build um, our habitat package. It contains other uh, aliases that will allow us to invoke the build very sim simply. For example, just by typing in build. And it will also allow us to load the package in order to test it locally before committing it upstream to shuttle ops. But in order for us to build our Chef Habitat package, we simply need to be 
and the root of our code base when we enter the Habitat Studio. So here we have our Habitat directory that we created earlier. We can see here that it contains the plant file and we can invoke the build. So this failed. And as I was alluding to earlier, we need a make file if we wanted to rely on the default behavior of using a make file. Here, it's um, tried to do the canonical uh, make file and configure uh, combination that you see with a lot of um, C applications. And since those didn't exist, our build failed. We're going to be creating our own building logic. And what we're going to do is create a do underscore build build phase callback. So here we can simply do a go build and we can also name the binary that is going to be uploaded here. So I'm going to reference our metadata, so the package name metadata. So this is actually going to build a binary that's called golang habitat hello world. So I'm going to hit build again and we can see that we couldn't invoke Go because that build time dependency is not satisfied. Because the Habitat Studio is a clean slate, we don't actually have the Go binary in the Habitat Studio. But there's another uh, piece of metadata called uh, package underscore build depths, which is an array of Habitat uh, packages. Habitat packages have a prefix of the origin. And these are part of the core origin, which are meant to be um, available for building uh, packages. So core things such as uh, Go or the JDK. And in this origin, we also have the Go package, which will supply the Go binary that will allow us to build this package. So once we have that, you can see that um, Habitat is actually taking a look at what the build dependencies are. It sees that core Go is required, and now it's installing it. It's also determining the dependencies required by core Go. So it's going to install um, core slash CA certs, uh, core slash um, Linux dash headers for it to be able to satisfy the dependency entirely. Here we run into our next error, and it's that even though we built, it goes to the next phase, which is installed, but it doesn't have the definition on how to install that. See here, it, it tried to use uh, make. So it tried to invoke a rule for from a make file for the installation process, and we don't have that. So because we um, don't have a make file, we are going to actually um, create this function ourselves. So all do install is going to do is we're actually going to create a uh, bin directory and we're going to create that bin directory in the um, final artifact directory. And the prefix for that is a variable called package underscore prefix. So this will be in our final artifact and we're going to name it um, bin. So this is just going to be create uh, housing our Golang binary. And now that this is uh, created, we are also going to move the binary that we just built and, and do build. And there's another variable that we can reference called src underscore path. So this is actually the build context. Um, so not the final artifact, but the context from which the directory from which our uh, code and our binary actually exists in because we're building um, in, in this directory right here where um, our binary is available. So we're going to be moving the uh, binary, which has the same name as our package. And that's going to go inside our build directory that we just created. So we're going to try this and it's created. Once we have our chef habitat package built, it's going to generate a last underscore build.n file 
and this file contains useful uh, information such as the name of the package, the origin, the version, uh, the platform that it is going to be able to run on, um, and also the package underscore ident, which is the fully qualified name of the package. So unlike core slash go, which only contains the origin and the name of the package, this contains the origin, the name, the version, and the timestamp. We can source this last underscore build uh, dot n file, and we are now able to reference um, any of the variables that are defined in it. So we can do a habits to see load, which is what is used to load our um, chef habitat packages as services. And we could do something like just use the origin and the and the uh, name of the package to load it or we could use the fully qualified identifier here out of convenience i'm going to use the variable that is exported at the end of the build so package underscore edit and i'm going to use it to run the chef habitat package as a service but i'm not able to do that because this chef habitat package currently as it stands is not a service package it is simply a binary package it contains um, the binary that we created and we can see that if we do hab package path and then package ident this is going to print out the installed location of um, the chef habitat package locally and we can see all of its contents. In particular, we can actually see the Golang binary that we built. So we can actually run it if we wanted to manually, but that's not what we want. We actually want to make sure that we're leveraging Habitat's application automation logic. And currently we're not able to load this Habitat package as a service because it lacks what's called a run hook. The run hook is the one hook that you need in order to take a Chef Habitat package, which is a binary package, and turn it into a service package. And unlike Planet SH, which is a specific type of bash file, which contains pre named uh, bash variables and bash functions that we need to populate, our run hook, which is going to exist in a directory called hooks inside of Habitat and is going to be named run. Simply run, no, no extension. And it's still going to contain our shebang. This is a freeform uh, bash script. So we can do whatever we want here. We can also say, um, hello, like we're going to run this package now. If I really wanted to do that. And I could hard code the name of the binary right here, or I can actually reference um, our package uh, name. So I could do I could do an exec and I could use handlebar substitution, which will allow us to access certain variables such as package.name. And all these are documented on habitat.sh. But here, I now have a run hook. So it built that. I'm going to source our last underscore build.n file and do a hab scc load package uh, ident, reference the package ident variable. But I'm adding a force flag so that it uses the latest um, package instead. So it'll actually unload the old one and load the new one. So I'm going to do that. And there's an alias called sup log, which will allow us to see or to tail the output of the Chef Habitat supervisor, which is the orchestrator of the Chef Habitat services. So we can see here that it did actually um, interpolate our script correctly. So we can see golang habitat hello world, but we can see that it didn't work. The binary is not found on the path. 
whenever we load a service, it's going to exist in the slash tab, slash SVC, slash um, the name of the package. And we're also able to see the hooks directory in there. So we can see the run hook is there. So we can debug it if we wanted to and see, oh, okay. So we have our exact run hook like we wanted to. We have our little message here and we have the interpolated name of the binary, but the uh, binary is not found on the path. And we are missing a um, variable in our plant file called packet underscore bin beers, which will contain the binaries that need to be on our path. And this is only going to, this is a list, but it's only going to be to have one entry and that's called bin. So this will mean that the bin directory that we saw earlier on here is going to be accessible on the path. So now that we have this variable in place, we can build again. We can do what we did earlier, which is uh, source that last underscore build dot m file. And then we can do a hab svc load again, package ident with the force flag. And we can tail the logs. We can see that it's restarting again. And we can see our message right here at the end. And we can see that our application is loading just like we saw in the IDE. And just like we saw in the Habitat Studio when we were running the binary manually. Now that we're able to go into our code base, enter the Chef Habitat Studio, execute build, and create a Chef Habitat package, that means it's ready to be committed upstream and a build pipeline and shuttle ops can consume the repository and create a Chef Habitat package.